That's one of the most important questions for our humanity at this stage of its evolution. How do we restore wisdom to its proper place in human consciousness and in and in human interaction? Um, E.F. Schumacher said uh, famously that um, uh, humanity is becoming too clever uh, to survive without wisdom. And his last book, uh, his first famous book, I suppose, was Small is Beautiful, but his last book was A Guide for the Perplexed, in which he looks at the, the disconnect from the spiritual reality, the spiritual nature of, of humanity that has, is the root cause of the dysfunctionality that is rampant and is even more rampant than it was when he he first noticed it. So um, I know we, David and I have spoken about this many times, and it's at the heart of of our of our common work. Uh, how, how do you feel uh, about that, David? Yes, indeed, and I think it's significant that this series we did one in 2022 called "The Future of Intelligence," and we were mindful of putting wisdom into the equation here. So this is why the series is called "The Future of Wisdom and Intelligence." And there's no doubt in my mind, as my friend Ravi Ravindra wrote to me only this morning, that we need more wisdom generally and everywhere in society. And wisdom is based on direct perception and experience. It's not just about thinking. Uh, it's, it's about the perception of more subtle aspects of reality. And I think we need to advance our perceptual abilities um, to arrive at this more integrated intelligence. Yes, I, I think what happens uh, when wisdom however we define it, but I think we know it when we when we meet it, <coughs> or when we see it at work. Wisdom, uh, if wisdom is lacking in any interaction, encounter or decision, if it's, if it's not restored quite quickly, then even the greatest of intelligences can become really, just really stupid, ultimately stupid. And I, I mean, we've all, many people, I'm sure, have seen the, uh, you know, the the film on Oppenheimer, in which uh, we see the, the the great scientific breakthrough that took place in the discovery of of atomic energy. First thing we do with it is to create an atomic bomb, and and the penny doesn't drop with the scientists, or at least with him, and uh, until it's too late, it's too late. And today, not to be too contemporary about it, but today the, uh, uh, the British Parliament passed the legislation uh, uh, which enables, empowers them to send uh, people who arrive by boat over the channel at great cost to their lives. In fact, five people died this morning uh, doing that. Uh, and under this new legislation, they will be put on a, tr a plane and sent to Rwanda. I mean, if that is intelligent, <laughs> then uh, what is what is unintelligent? So, or just even. So I think uh, it is of crucial importance that we understand the nature of intelligence, but also recognize the signs when intelligence goes wild when it disconnects from the um, its root, really. I mean, the root of intelligence is wisdom. It is this consciousness, the deep, pure, clear, clear consciousness that derives ultimately from our source, from our, this, the source of our being. And when that is open and we are infused by it, then we can use our different kinds of intelligence in a, in a, a wise way for the benefit of all. Yes, I think the key word here is balance, and um, that we, we, we support the, the use of analytical reason and critical intelligence, but it needs to be balanced by imagination, empathy, intuition, you know, creativity. And in this series, we will be looking um, with a panel of very distinguished speakers at various aspects of intelligence, um, starting with artificial intelligence, 
moving on to embodied intelligence, heart intelligence, and finally, ethical intelligence. So we hope that by the end of the series, we'll, we'll have a more integrated view of integral intelligence. Hmm. I think uh, having the, the, the discussion on artificial intelligence first, which uh, Ilya Delio is, uh, is leading uh, with Rowan Williams uh, as a respondent to it and uh, Peter Russell, um, is very very intelligent thing to do because one of the foolish things that underlies our fear of artificial intelligence is that we call it intelligence in the first place. And most, most of the experts uh, in that field have told me that it shouldn't be called art intelligence because it's, it's the wrong metaphor. We're al allowing the human to anthropomorphize uh, you know, an, an object or a process or a computer that we have in, invented. So that's, that's a very basic level of intelligence, deciding how we name things, how we understand them, and not jumping on the bandwagon too quickly when those definitions lead us into fear or paranoia. Well, as you say, this or imply, this intelligence has actually no understanding. It's a simulation mm. of, 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 of so-called intelligence, and particularly it's computational language intelligence. Uh, mm. But it can be quite, quite deceptive that, that when something is written by chat GPT, it, it can be really quite impressive and sound as if it could have been written by a human being. Well, m maybe. I haven't read... Well... Whenever I've seen anything artificially generated by artificial intelligence, I've always felt, maybe because I knew, but I've always felt that it had a uh, something un artificial, un <laughs> artificial and inhuman <laughs> and, and and processed, clever, clever, because it can say a lot of things in a, a, a that you you know would probably take half an hour to to sit with a pen and work out maybe, but uh, it could create structures and put in links and all the rest, but but there's something lacking. And that's where wisdom, I think, uh, you, you linked it in, a minute ago to intuition. This is, a, this is a taste, a taste for what is real or not. And human beings have been given this palette of consciousness to be able to taste and prove. I know you like your wine uh, in moderation, of course, but you like your wine, David, and, and I've enjoyed watching you appreciate it and to taste it. And that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability, it comes from the word sapientia, which gives us, um, it comes from sapere, to taste. So it's not about looking at, objectifying and analyzing, it's more this immediate contact with the nature of something and and being able to discern it from immediate experience and that that is intuition if you like but it's it's the operation of wisdom in practical situations practical wisdom indeed well we hope that you the listeners will uh, come and taste with us these different forms of intelligence and that at the end of the series we will have developed our integrated intelligence it's a wonderful uh combination of perspectives and speakers uh which i'm really looking forward to, to to seeing and i think the interaction between the speakers and their respondents is going to be what releases the taste and the and the uh, the bouquet of, of of their thoughts